I got my other banana bliss in too, because I told you guys, I told you, I'm not messing around with this perfume. I took a hammer and just went whack, you know, and I knocked off the top of it. $80 for a Middle Eastern perfume is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Don't, shh, 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 shh. You don't have to tell me, I already know, I'm the problem. Well, hello, hi, it's Jamie, I'm the problem. It's me. It's like the, the horror movie Scream, where the where the murderer always comes back. Marinating in the toilet or something, like ejecting off of my body. Like, like something from the exorcist. Like put myself out there again and see if I get see if I get hurt. I want to tell you all, I need to explain myself. Let, let me explain. Just sit down, please, and let me explain. Welcome back all you fragrance fanatics and beauty babes. I hope that you guys are having a wonderful day today. If you're new here, hi, my name is Jamie and I love to talk about perfumes and I'm so glad you're here. And to all my returning subscribers, thank you guys so much for your continued support. That means the world to me. So for today's video, it's gonna be a little bit like a hodgepodge collage type of thing going on here. It, I kind of have a, a several different things that I need to talk about in this one video. Um, some of them are questions that I got asked in the comment section that I want to answer. Um, some of them are uh, some perfumes I'm planning on decluttering. Uh, what perfumes did I buy the month of October? Uh, all different types of things. So let's jump right in. We're gonna start off with a question I got about travel sizes. Like how do I make travel sizes to go with me places instead of bringing like full size bottles with me? And to answer that question, I would say there, there's several different ways. One of the ways is that I will get, like if these are empty, if these travel sizes that you might already have are empty, some of them, some of these unscrew. So you can, um, so, you know, just pretend this is empty. It's not right now, but, you know, <laughs> just for demonstration purposes, pretend this is an empty bottle. And then you can take your perfume and put it in the, you know, put it on the hole and just spray away until it fills up and then just screw back on the lid. Um, you can do that with the travel sizes if you have any, and you can also do it with, if you have any like sample sizes that you've ever bought that you that are empty they come undone as well so you can always fill up a perfume in there just by spraying it out or what you can do is buy these little travel decant things these are so they usually come in a big bunch and these are so inexpensive like maybe five dollars for like a whole bunch of them um it, it's not very expensive at all and it has, um, you know, a lid and a little sprayer to it. So you can just throw this in your purse or wherever. And how you use it is it's got this little rubber nozzle thing down here, this little hole. And you would take the top off your perfume like this. It's not going to break your perfume to do that. Just take the little top piece off and stick that into the hole like so. And you just press down. and it will fill up your little decant travel size thing here. And then you can just put the top back on. There you go, like nothing ever happened. And um, I'm actually gonna keep this one out in my car because I love to have little um, little travel sizes of all different types of perfume in case like I'm out and about and I wanna freshen up with something. But, oh my gosh, I love Donna Bon Aroma. Ugh, okay, anyway, I hope that that answers that question. The next thing we're gonna talk about is the perfumes I bought in the month of October. And honestly, I did not buy that many things this October, even though it was a very long month, you know, 31 days, it's a long month in October. I really didn't buy that much. And that is because number one, our dryer broke. Like, ugh. and then I had to, we had, we had to save up and get part of our fence done for the backyard because Penelope, my little Morky, was escaping through one of the neighbor's fences. And she would, oh my gosh, I was, I was so nervous all the time making sure 
the back door is always locked? Is the back door always shut? You know, where is Penelope? Because, you know, with kids running in and out and sometimes the doors get cracked and then she would find her way out. And once she's out, like she can get on, like we have like a, a big road. It's, it's a four lane or like, a, you know, two, two ways on each side type of highway thing going on here. And it makes me so nervous when she gets out because once she's out, she goes mental. She totally forgets who she even is. She just starts running and she doesn't even know where she's running. She just starts sprinting. And um, so it's, it's very scary. And <laughs> it has given me panic attacks several times. So we finally had to get the fence fixed $2,000 for this fencing so that Penelope will not escape. <laughs> and it's so funny, once we finally got it in, the first thing she did when she got outside was to try to look for a place where she could escape. Like she is actively trying to kill herself and I am trying to stop that from happening. Um, oh my gosh, sometimes puppies, they're so silly. But but I'm trying to make the backyard as safe as possible uh, so that they can, can have the freedom to run around and have space to, you know, because we have a big backyard and I want my dogs to be able to um, be able to, to, you know, uh, take advantage of that whole space and run around and have fun, um, but also be safe. So, so because of that, I did not have as much extra cash lying around as I usually do. Well, not that I have a lot of extra cash anyway, but you know what I mean? Like I had some other expenses this month and a lot happening. So I did not purchase as month. It purchased this as much this month as I normally do which is probably a good thing anyway, you know. <laughs> I should go on a no-buy sometime, but we'll, we'll see how long that lasts. So I did pick up um, Glow by JLo. I wanted to pick up the original Glow by JLo. That still has not come in yet. I, I ordered that, it was like two, three days after October, like we're talking like October 3rd, 4th, 5th in that area. I ordered it then, it still is not in yet. I don't know when it's coming in, but I did order Glow by JLo because it, I don't know, it seemed, it, it's, I've always had the Miami Glow by JLo, but I don't like that one anymore because apparently I don't like, um, what, what is it? This a passion fruit. I'm not into like smelling passion fruit scents. Don't like that. So I wanted to try, I, I never tried the original ever. Can you believe that? I know it's been out since like 2002 and I've just never, it's just never one that I've ever tried and I would love to. I feel like I would really enjoy it and it was only $20. So it's like, why not? You know? So that is still yet to come in. I would like for that to be a part of my celebrity perfume video that I'm planning on making. Um, if it ever shows up, we'll see. And then also I ordered another um, Britney Spears fantasy. Um, it's going to go right there in that empty spot there. I ordered it, um, it beginning of October again and from Amazon this time. And Amazon said that it was supposed to be here like by the 15th of October. And then they said, oh, it's running late. It's running late. It's running late. Now it's November and it's still apparently running late. I don't know. But it was the... Um, Festival Fantasy. The Festival Fantasy has um, some notes in there that I thought I would really love. It has this dewberry, sour cherry, and plum in there. So I thought that would be very, you know, fruity, juicy sweetness. And then there's some sugar and some vanilla and some sandalwood, some jasmine and lily. So I, I don't know. I just feel like I'm really going to love this one as well. So that's why I wanted to pick it up. But Again, I don't know when that's going to show up because apparently none of my celebrity perfumes want to come in this month. I don't know. Um, and then also I picked up, I picked up the After Effect. I thought that I would really enjoy this one. And you know what? On a man, I would. On a man, this would be amazing. But it's just, it's too masculine for me. I was thinking that this would be a great fall and winter perfume. It's got, you know, the tobacco and the rum and the cinnamon and that, that seems like it could work for me, but it just, it comes off a little bit too masculine on my skin and I wish it didn't. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm going to give this to, um, 
to my son downstairs because he, he likes perfumes and I think he would enjoy this one. But you know, I'm glad I tried it out. At least now I know. Like I should just stay away from those kind of um, uh, tobacco-y rum type scents, I guess. And then, oh, um, since since I am talking about what I'm 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 getting rid of that one. <laughs> I don't know. I'm switch I'm switching into declutter mode now, you guys. Okay, hang hang on for those of you who are trying to pay attention to what I'm saying. Um, we're switching into declutter mode. So I'm decluttering that one to my son, and then I'm also decluttering Sayer. This perfume is not bad. It's it's a vanilla balm. I just for whatever reason. My nose is picking up oud big time now in perfumes. Like it's, it used to not be able to pick that type of thing up very much, but now my nose is like a, like a, uh, a bloodhound when it comes to oud. Like, like it's starting to really pick it out of perfumes and my nose is not liking it. Um, it, it gives me a headache and that's what's happening here. The oud is coming out too much for me and I just can't wear it. But um, but I do think it's a really nice perfume. And also, same thing with Vanilla Skin. You would think like Vanilla Skin, like you have a problem with that one? Yes, I can't wear that one either because for whatever reason, that oud that's in the base there is coming out super prominent now to my nose. And, and like I said, that never used to be the case, but I, I don't know. My nose is changing or something. I don't know. Um, it doesn't like oud anymore. So I'm decluttering this one. My, my daughter is very excited because she loves this bottle so much. So I'm, so I'm gonna let her have it. She's gonna have the time of her life. And okay, so now switching back into what I bought this month. I bought the Banana Bliss. And for those who didn't see the Banana Bliss video, like this is what the new packaging looks like for it that I created. And I'll show you, I got my other Banana Bliss in too. Because I told you guys, I told you, I'm not messing around with this perfume. This is like literally one of my top, top favorite true love perfumes like I really love this perfume so I had to buy a backup of it so this is what the backup bottle looks like when it comes in and it's really it's really not that terrible it just for such a beautiful scent I just felt like it needed something more I don't know like like you would never see somebody put J'adore Lore in something like this packaging you know and that's how I felt about this scent I was like this is too beautiful of a scent so that's why I changed up the bottle. I have a gold label coming in um, for this perfume that's gonna have Banana Bliss on the front here. Uh, kind of like how it shows on here. But yeah, so that's how the packaging for Banana Bliss comes. And for those of you who are wondering, when I, um, when I was transferring over the old bottle into the new bottle, what I had done was let me show you. See, I, I took off this part of it and I literally broke off the top. I took a hammer and just went whack, you know, and I knocked off the top of it. That way I could just pour it into because the devotion bottle, I specifically picked this one, not only because um, I thought it, would, it, it was a perfect fit for this perfume, but also because the lid comes off of this one. So I was able to just pour it in to this perfume. Now I did lose five mil in the creation of my new version, but I have used up 40 to 50 mil of this perfume so far on my skin because I love it so much. I know that there was, I'm saying this because I know there were some people in the comment section asking me questions about it. So I'm answering that. Um, but yeah, my main, my main problem was not just the bottle, but also when you would spray it out, it would get all over the rim. It would drip perfume all over the rim and you would have to wipe it clean after every time you sprayed it. And I was just like, I can't, I can't do this. I can't do this. And we won't go big into detail about it because, um, cause I already, I already have a dedicated video about that. If you haven't seen it, you can go watch it. I also picked up Noble Blush, the new Latafa perfume that's coming out. I'm I, I don't, I'm curious. I'm curious. We'll see what happens. This could be like really good or go really bad. I don't know because sometimes I, I mean, I do like really creamy things, but I'm not really into rose, but apparently they've got some note in it called rose milk or something, but it's more like a pudding dessert, like a Middle Eastern pudding, pudding dessert. 
So I'm like, okay, maybe this will be like sweet, creamy, pink dessert type of smell maybe. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know. We'll see. But it has not come in yet. Um, I did place the order, but I don't think it's supposed to be in here until next week. And then last but not least, I did get my vanilla toffee in and I was very disappointed. Now, I, I want to tell you all, I need to explain myself. L let me explain. Just sit down, please, and let me explain <laughs> before you all go running to the comment section to tear me apart. Okay. <laughs> I, I never ever want to deter anyone from buying a perfume that they might enjoy. Never ever. I never want to harsh anyone's mellow. I never want to stomp on anyone's parade. You do you. All I wanted to do in that um, small clip that I made yesterday was just to give people a heads up in case they were expecting something else from this perfume. I just wanted to give people a warning like, hey, you know, I know that it says this, but I got a different experience. So just be cautious if you're planning on purchasing this perfume. That, that's all I was trying to do. Because I know a lot of people are going to love this. I, I think I'm going to be the minority and not the majority when it comes to this perfume. Because if you love black opium and strong coffee perfumes like that, then you are probably really going to enjoy this. And that's great. But I wasn't expecting it to be that. And I'm not, a, like, I don't like black opium. I can't, like, it makes me nauseous, the smell of black opium. But for some reason, I, I read the notes in this. I didn't just, I didn't just buy this, like, because it was brand, I'm like, oh, a brand new perfume. Let's just purchase it. Like, I really fought it through because th this was almost $80. So I really took my time and thought this through before I bought it to make sure that it, you know, it would be something that I would love, or at least I thought. And I know, I know, almost $80 for a Middle Eastern perfume is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. I don't recommend anyone do that. <laughs> and I know, I know, don't you do, don't, shh, 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 you don't have to tell me. I already know I'm the problem. I'm the problem because <laughs> if people like me did not buy $80 Middle Eastern perfumes, then they wouldn't, they wouldn't um, make it $80. They would lower the price down. But because there's people like me out there that are willing to pay whatever price, then they keep on upping the price of these Middle Eastern perfumes. So hello. Hi, it's Jamie. I'm the problem. It's me. I know. I know. Don't ever recommend paying $80 for Middle Eastern perfume. But but I really thought I was going to enjoy this because of the notes in there. I, well, let me take you through like my process of, of what I, when I first got this perfume in, I sprayed it out three times into um, the sink and uh, I put it away for a couple hours and let it set before I, I sprayed it on myself. So I did give it a little time to set, but I did not let it macerate for like weeks and months. But with that being said... I will say, usually, even if you don't let something macerate, you kind of can tell when you, you kind of can tell if it's going to be something that you're going to end up eventually loving or not, like in the beginning. Um, like when I'll spray something out and I'm like, oh, that smells nice, but oh, I bet it's going to get even better when it macerates, you know. This one was, was like, no, no, no. Even with maceration, no, no, I don't, I don't want this. I don't want it. It scares me. This perfume scares me. So, uh, so I'll take you through. The, so I sprayed it out three times, just three times on my arm. And I'm smelling coffee right away. Like it just hits me. This big, dark, dark, black, bitter, earthy coffee smacks me in the face. And I'm like, ooh. But, but I let it sit. And then it kind of the coffee note kind of drifts off a little bit into the background and I start to pick up on the most beautiful smell. So sweet, creamy, ultra vanilla sweet goodness. I mean, tons of vanilla, tons of vanilla sweetness, creamy, um, brown, dark, rich brown sugar. I picked up on the walnut and the, the date note and and I got a little bit of a cardamom in there that was giving it a little bit of warm spice mixed with this warm amber. And I was like, oh, this is nice. This is going to be an amazing perfume. 
and, and, and you know, and, it, and at that point in time, I thought, wow, this kind of reminds me of a mixture of um, uh, Camera, the original Camera, which is a little bit spicier than the Camera Kawa. That, because of the dates and the, and the spices in there, that that was coming off on my arm and it mixed with my Eternal Coffee by Paris Corner that has that creamy coffee note. You know, that's, that's what I was kind of getting there. And then all of a sudden, the coffee comes back. And it, and it, it just, it, it's like, it was like a, in a horror movie. It was like the, the horror movie Scream where the, where the murderer always comes back. <laughs> they never just go away. So this, so this coffee note comes back and it's angry and it's even louder than in the beginning of the perfume. And it brings back the cardamom, like the cardamom and the coffee like became like, like um, partners in crime. And they just came to like murder my nose. They were just killing my nose. It, it burnt so bad. Like it really, it truly hurt my nose. It was making my eyes water. Um, I, I had to go to the back, I went to the shower, took a loofah, had to scrub my arm down. And I still, I, like I was having trouble getting the scent off me. And it just kept on getting louder and louder and louder. Even after I was scrubbing, I'm like, oh my gosh, this is never going to leave me. And and so I was finally able to get it off me. Come back in here and I'm like, whoa, it, like it had filled the entire room with this smell, this earthy, bitter, black coffee and this spicy cardamom. And I had to open up my windows because I thought it was going to kill my animals in here. Like it was just so powerful, just those three sprays. And it was so just, oh, like it, it hurt. Like my nose for the rest of the whole night, my nose, would, my, the inside of my nose was, was burning on fire. So I could have, it's very possible, I could have just had some type of allergic to re reaction to something that's in here, maybe. I don't know. Like I said, I think the majority of people are gonna like this. If you like spicy perfumes and you like really strong, bold coffee perfumes, th then you're gonna love this. And that's great, like I said. But that's just not what I was expecting. I was expecting more like a, um, like e like the perfume Eternal Coffee. That that coffee perfume, I can I can handle because the coffee is very, just, oh, it's mixed with so many sweet, creamy things that it just, it makes it smell so nice and like, and like mild, but, but this is like bold and strong and it's very, it comes off very masculine smelling on my skin as well. So for the people that are getting the really nice, like vanillas and the sticky dates and, and, uh, the, all, all that goodness, like, oh, I, like I envy you because I wish I got that from this perfume, but I just don't. I pick the cardamom and the coffee are the two huge things that are coming, projecting off of my body. Like, like something from the exorcist. Like it's just, it's too, it's too much. It's too much. And so I'm going to be um, putting this on Macari and just kind of cut my losses. Come on. Cause I don't even want this in the house. I don't even want to give it to one of my girls or nothing like that's how much it scares me. Um, I'm just going to sell it on Macari and, and, hopefully make a little bit of money back from what I lost. Um, but you know what? It, it works out because they, I, you know, I'll tell you something else and I hope this doesn't upset anyone, but the Shaghoff Tonka, Oud Tonka, love that bottle. Oh, I love that bottle. That gold in that turquoise. Oh, stunning. But I just thought that perfume was lacking something and I didn't know what, but it was just lacking something and I just never wore it. So that's why I gave it away. But this bottle, I bought it for what the scent was going to be. As far as the look of the bottle, I'm not really a fan. I, I, I don't like like a mustard yellow. It, it reminds me of like pee that's been sitting in the toilet for like three or four days, just like marinating in the toilet or something like it just... I, I don't, I don't like this color. So you know what? It works out. This perfume just isn't for me, but for whoever is enjoying it, that's great. That that's great. I am very happy for you. But I did want to mention that when I got this perfume in, they did give me this, this came with it. 
and I wasn't expecting that. That was a nice little treat. So I am keeping this. This one has some, some pineapple in it and some jasmine and some vanilla and um, some amber and things in here. And, and I, it kind the pineapple in here, the pineapple in here kind of makes it almost like a tropical jasmine, vanilla type of scent. Um, I do like it. And so this is a perfume oil for those of you who don't know. So, so it comes with like a stick and you just kind of like rub it on your arm. I would love to get the other one of this because these are really inexpensive. Leali, I think is the name of it. It, it comes in, the, the, the color is a little bit more red looking. And that one has um, some mango and papaya and stuff in it so, and some coconut. So I'm really excited to try that one out and see. I think I'll like that one better, even better than I do this one. But I do, but I do enjoy this one. I also would like to pick up a tiramisu perfume. There are three of them. One of them from Paris Corner and two of them from Zemea. And for those of you who don't know, Every year on my birthday, I go to Olive Garden by myself because, oh, I love going out to eat by myself. Anyway, I'll go to Olive Garden. I will sit down and I will have just a huge plate of carbohydrate, just any type of pasta. Give me any type of pasta and I will eat it. And then for dessert, I will always get um, tiramisu. I love tiramisu so much. Um, anyway. So there's, so there's the one from Paris Corner that has coffee, cinnamon, cream, vanilla, cacao, and musk. I had thought about picking that one up, but then that's when the vanilla toffee thing came out and I was like, hmm. And, I, and I, that's when I really thought about it and I was like, I think I would prefer this one better, but that was such a mistake. That was a mistake. I made a mistake. Um, so, but then I saw that Zemea was coming out with two different ones. Okay, so this first one is coffee, amaretto, vanilla, um, or sorry, ice cream, vanilla, biscuit, vanilla again, brown sugar, and amber. So this, again, it could go very good or could go very bad. It looks like it's going to be a boozy coffee, but it's also going to be super creamy and sweet. I'm hoping. I, you know, it, who knows? With these coffee perfumes, it's very hit or miss for me when it comes to coffee perfumes. The coffee's got to be done just right. So I would like to give it a try, put myself out there again and see if I get, see if I get hurt, my nose gets hurt again. Um, I would like to give that one a try. And then there's also this other one that doesn't have coffee in it, but it does, it does look very interesting. This one is the um, tiramisu caramel. And this one has caramel, honey, woody notes, coumarin, whiskey, vanilla, and musk. This seems very interesting. And I, I would like to know how much they are first. At this moment in time, they are not available for sale. Um, but they should be very soon, I would imagine. Um, I, I think I'm going to try those two first and see what I think. And uh, we'll go from there. I, I hope you guys found this video entertaining or informative. And like I said, please don't take any offense. If you love this perfume, I'm so happy for you. And I really think that it's just going to be me. I think it's just my skin chemistry. I really do. I don't think it's going to be, I don't think as many people are going to, um, have a problem with it as I do. Um, hopefully, I really, I really hope that's the case. That I'm the majority. Um, or wait, minority instead of majority. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it. And remember to seize the day and overspray, except for vanilla toffee. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> Bye, guys.